sweet. Here it's just an all year round season. <laughs> yeah. um, also putting lemon juice in your hair, oh. go a little blonder. I know you did that. Okay, and all, I'm playing under the garden hose. These things, I need to talk to the people at Southern Living Magazine. Who actually wrote this article, Who right? wrote this article? Because I feel like kids everywhere do this. I remember when I was in fourth grade, so I really wanted blonde hair. I really did. <laughs> In Utah, okay? okay, and I was like a, I was a a pretty good kid, right? Like went to church on Sunday, got good grades in school, oh, no. like so. If you, if you color your hair, not a good kid. Well, you know, it was sort of like a rebellious thing to do. But I remember someone at school telling me I had seen that Touch of Sun product that you can spray yeah. in, but we couldn't afford to buy that. It was a few dollars, right? We didn't have spending money, so someone told me the home hack is just to do peroxide, and I did it while my mom was away one day. And I laid out in the sun. Why are you making that face? Well, you don't need sun to help with the peroxide. <laughs> well, I think it. I think it does enhance the bleaching action. My hair was like a very coppery orange color. We could do it right now. We You'll could. Get the same. No, I'd been there, done oh, that. Oh, it's so pretty. But it was so. I felt so accomplished that I had done this, and I didn't get in trouble. My mom my liked mom your liked highlights. It. She did. Love it. Yeah. Homegrown highlights too. You That's have true. it. Um, the other thing that reminds me, and we used to catch fireflies. Oh. You know, growing up where I lived, we grew up in the middle of a forest preserve, which cool. is really weird um, in Chicago, right? But like you all... lived in a tent? Oh, no, no. An actual house. <laughs> but like the, the subdivision grew was up in built. The woods. Never. Are you kidding? The subdivision <laughs> was built in the middle of a forest preserve. That's so cool. Really cool. And um, so we had tons of fireflies. We used to get the mason jars and put them in there and, and light them up them. and save them. What happened to fireflies? Well, I think they still exist on the East Coast, like Washington, D.C., Virginia. But this is Southern living, and this is what you do in the South, and catching fly fireflies is one of the things on the, on the list. I don't think we have fireflies in the South. They're not here, right? I don't think so. Where? Do we? Where? In Seguin. Like Seguin. Yeah. Let's Seguin? go to Seguin really? and catch fireflies. It used to be in El Campo and in Knoxville. Okay, well, we have some firefly research to do. I, I mean, I want to catch some. It I just reminded too. me, or making sun tea. I don't know if you made sun tea. What is that? As a kid. It, it just, you put the tea, like, uh, you make tea. And put it in the sun? Yes, and let the heat of the sun, heat of the day, make your tea. Well, that sounds so magical. It is magical and yummy as well. I'd you love to try it. You put it in a big it. jug and put it outside. It's amazing. I'd love to try that. We should do a segment about that. It's so good. The fireflies, we didn't have those growing up, and I remember going to the East Coast once on a trip and just thinking it was the most miraculous thing. I still think so it's... So cool, right? It's so, so cool. I wish we had them like here in Houston. Right. Uh, cicadas. <laughs> I mean, it's also cicada season. Yeah. But no, I don't think anybody's like, yay, cicadas. What do you think you would add to the list of things that we only do in the South? Um, I don't know. What do we only do here? If we actually sat down over a glass of wine, we could probably make a list a mile long. I think the crawfish season Definitely. and those things, I mean, that's a tradition in the South that I think the rest of the country But I, I don't think on. of that as summer because crawfish season it's starts so early. Yeah. You know? Um, there was something else, and I don't remember the name of them, and I remember going, there was like a little pond. This It sounds like I lived... <laughs> <laughs> Such a city person. Such a city girl. I don't know where it was. There was a pond. There was this pond in oh, our neighborhood. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. And we would, what I, we would cut these things, and I think they were called like pigtails. You would cut them. Cattails. Cattails. <laughs> the things that grow on the banks of water. Yeah. Not cat cattails. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Pigtails are in your are hair. In your hair. I don't, for some reason, I just couldn't remember what they... They're brown, right? Yes. And you let them lay out, and then you can... You can clip them. You can dry them. You can put them in, like, a flower arrangement or, like, just in a vase by them, by themselves. That's what I thought of just now. Pigtails. Pigtails. <laughs> Maybe because I'm wearing pigtails in the summer. Maybe that's where I got that from. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, but, Sorry what, about but that. what about those pigtails? That just reminds me of summer, that, those pigtails. Um, what are they called? Cattails. Cattails. <laughs> cat but they don't look like cattails. They're not. Never mind. Forget it. <laughs> or what about. Never mind. I don't remember what that's called either. You, you're in the field and like. <laughs> <laughs> when a like dand. A, like a dandelion? Yes, yeah. It's like we're playing charades. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> You knew it! We should go on charades wow. together. Wow, no, we shouldn't. <laughs> you know the thing. 
<laughs> Blowing out birthday candles? <laughs> but it's like, but it's the old, it's the, it's dead, right? Is that what it is? I don't know. They kind of float. Yes. Okay. Dandelion reminds me of summer. Dandelion is a yellow flower. Yes. And then they, you know, dry flower. up and they have like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. How long have you been living in the city? <laughs> You are, we are reinforcing every stereotype about I, us right now, right? I know. Oh, my I know. gosh. It's been a minute since I talked. But the oh. thing is, it was a test to see if you knew what I was doing, it's like charades. I so. mean, lately I've been spending a lot of time in Idaho and Utah, so I've seen a lot of dandelions and a lot of cattails. Did you Did you grow them? No. No, no because no. then it just spreads the seed. So our, uh, our producers were asking me about road tripping. We've talked about, like, you know, electric cars before on the show and how, you know, there are automakers who are saying that they're going to get rid of the gas combustion engine, move toward electric, which is especially great with like wind and solar, because then when you're charging your car at home, you go on a road trip and you're literally driving your car from like sun power or wind power. But people ask me all the time about, well, how can you go on a road trip and how far can you go and how often do you charge? Totally legitimate questions. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality is you can go anywhere in an electric car that you can go in any other car. Well, and I think in today's world, the accessibility to recharge yes. it is w way more visible than it was. Oh, for sure. Just My even first, a couple years ago. Well, yes, yes. Leaps and bounds from where we were a few years ago. My first electric car was this little Nissan Leaf, and it had a range of like 100 miles, which is enough for commuting, you know, but if you wanted to go on a road trip, that would be problematic. Right. Now with cars, you know, 300 plus range, I think mine goes like 325 miles on one charge. Okay. So like we could get to Austin, we can get back. It's Road trips are no big deal. You charge along the way and it's really fast. So Travel and Leisure Magazine did this article essentially reassuring people you can actually travel across the country and if you don't want to stop and supercharge, there are so many hotels and spots with charging stations. So, like, you go to the hotel, you plug in, and when it's time to go, it's fully ready to go. That's a level two charge for okay. people who drive EVs. Um, there's also a quick charge, a level three, which can juice up your car really, really fast. So, like, in 20 or 30 minutes, you're okay. good to go. But also, if you like to stay at an RV park... It's almost like it is created for electric cars because you can go and you plug in, you spend the night, get a full charge, yeah. and then the next morning you roll out and it's super, super cheap. So different kinds of charging stations. Um, during the summer, your charge lasts longer. So anyway, email me if you have questions about driving EVs because I can answer your questions. So wait a second. If you're driving your car, you can park at an RV even though you're not an RV? You can park in an RV? No, I'm saying, like, if you go to... Well, that's a good question. If there's a slip available, as long as you pay the fee... Right, it doesn't they matter. They probably don't care, you know, but then you'd be sleeping in your car. But a lot of people might have, like, a car with a trailer. I got you. Or, okay. or like, maybe their car is towing one of those little pop-ups. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Now I got it. It was just unclear. Okay, so, you know, I'm always kind of thinking about these weird things, but the other day I was at the grocery <laughs> store. This is really strange. Have you ever noticed this? That grocery stores rarely have windows huh or if you if they do they're, they're like they're right in the front, front. I, has, I, I know now that i think about yeah right up front if any i did a little research and this basically has to do with retail shopping psychology oh okay yeah well they apparently they want to create a space where people want to spend time and money without many windows you don't see time markers. Think Vegas, right? Casinos. You don't see time markers. You have no idea if it's dark light outside, bad weather. Oh, because let's say you're in the store shopping and a storm rolls in and it's like, oh, no, I've got to get home. Then you cut your shopping trip short. Yes. And they want you to stay. They want you to peruse the aisles. Wow. Too much sunlight could also fade packaging. Mm. Some have tile floors, so that makes carts, uh, they make a lot of noise, causing shoppers to slow down and browse more. Another trick is that a lot of stores like to play some upbeat music when they're closing to speed shoppers up. Oh, that would be me. I told you before how I have this thing about loud, like, rock music in stores. It makes me crazy. It makes me want to run out. I don't know about loud rock, but, like, maybe there's, like, a good beat and sort of, it's just kind of, I don't know. Maybe, but have you ever been in a store where the music is playing in the background and suddenly it's You're like... You're tapping your toe? 
<laughs> no. No. Okay. For, it has the opposite effect on me. Suddenly, it's sort of like I reach my breaking point, and maybe I hadn't noticed the music, but suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, what is that music? Typically, that doesn't happen to me in the grocery store. In the grocery store, I've, 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 you know, I've grooved a little bit in the aisle. It'll happen like in a retail shop, where you walk in and it's like perfume a, and music a, like all at the same time. Store. And you, I can't get away from it. Yeah. And then that's where I, I lose my marbles. Do you still shop in clothing stores? Like, do you still go out and about? I know you love to shop local, as I do, do I. But, and so, like, smaller stores, I don't mean that. I mean, like, really big, huge stores. No, I haven't been perusing the mall in probably over a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I went. You know, it was interesting. I was uh, visiting my mom in Salt Lake recently, and it's, it's when you go back home and you see the things that have changed, store landscapes have totally changed there, and malls, like, big department stores have closed all over the place. Yes, I know. I know. I mean, I do think, you know, prior to the pandemic, we were making a lot of changes. We were shopping from our devices and shopping from home because we were so busy. Now that was really the only alternative over the last year, right? Where my focus and my family's focus got very hyper local to support those businesses and small businesses. And, um, and I, and I think that's really important because those, you know, the larger stores have been pushing them out for so long. Yeah. Um, and you know, we do pay for a convenience, right? When we're yeah. shopping from our devices. Have you noticed though, the past couple months as, as the pandemic has been winding down and more and more people are vaccinated that parking lots, it is a good sign to see parking lots being packed. Parking lots are full and merchandise is less on the shelves. Oh. So I don't think p people are buying, whether it's the large box, you know, uh, large stores. retail yeah. stores versus, and the smaller ones. The inventory is just not there. You know, years ago, you'd be like, oh, wait for end of, su under, end of season sale because everything's going to be marked down. Well, the buying capability is just not there like that anymore. So there's not a lot of these markdowns coming at the end of the season. You have to think about that, too. I feel like you could work in retail. Might have. Oh, OK. I know. Interesting stuff. Make a wish on the dandelion. What are those called? <laughs> Coming up, we have Memorial Day 101. How the holiday started and ways you can honor your loved ones. And uh, we're heading out to Sugarland Memorial Park to find out how they're honoring our fallen heroes today. More Houston Life after the break. Welcome back to Houston Life on this Monday, Memorial Day 2021. And you know, Memorial Day is always the last Monday of the month of May. And this year it falls a little bit later. So it became a national holiday in 1971. It used to be known as Decoration Day, started as a way to honor the fallen soldiers of the Civil War, Courtney. And also Memorial Day versus Veterans Day. So here's the explainer. Memorial Day, of course, honors the lives lost serving. And Veterans Day celebrates everyone who has served. And if you would like to learn more, there is a full article on Reader's Digest and um, traditions to honor loved ones. I remember this as a very young child, and I don't know if it's if I actually remember it or I just maybe seen pictures, but people wearing poppies, mm -hmm. the red um, poppy flower pin. Yeah. Um, I remember that. Also playing taps and hang your flag at half staff and visit a local veterans cemetery to uh, honor those as well. Yeah, those are great ways to honor the fallen. I remember when I was a kid and we we were in Washington, D.C. and we went to Arlington National Cemetery, Beautiful. the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier there. And I just thought it was so such a reverent place, you know, because you know, it's, it's constantly guarded around right. the clock, rain or shine. And the day that we were there for the first time, it just happened to be raining. And I remember thinking like, wow, this is such an incredibly peaceful place. Um, and I know, again, we mentioned at the top of today's show, this is a really tough day for a lot of families. And I feel like for so many people who don't have family members who mm -hmm. served in war, a lot of us do have family members who did. Um, it, I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like over the years, the focus has been sort of turned into like a sale day. Yes. It's a day to go shopping. It's a day to like have a barbecue. I think spending time with your loved ones is always a good thing, right? But I hope that we can all take just a few moments today and really think about why this day 
exists in the first place. I know. And pause and remember and pay honor to those who have given their lives, of course, for all of us. Um, and, you know, it is it is great, too, that people want to get together. And I feel like at, at this stage of the game where we are uh, in this pandemic, um, and vaccinated and, you know, to have that family moment, but to also maybe have that moment of silence or moment of gratitude and thankfulness um, to be able to say thank you uh, to the huge sacrifice that so many have given yeah, for all of us. A lot of families out there are having a, you know, a somber day, I'm sure. So we want to hear from you. Who are you honoring this Memorial Day? You know the drill. Head over to our Houston Life Facebook page and share your messages, and we'll be sharing them later on in today's show. You know, Sugarland Memorial Park honored our fallen heroes today with a special ceremony and a 21-gun salute. Joe Sam visited the park to learn more about why it is so special for visitors and their families. It's a place of serenity and one of memory for fallen soldiers, a place where loved ones can go to show their appreciation for those courageous lost lives. Sugarland Memorial Park is one of our local park properties that actually pay tribute to our military men and women. There are a couple of features to this park that include the Remembrance Tower. You'll find the names of military personnel who lost their lives in combat throughout the years and their names are listed according to what military branch that they served in. Special Events Coordinator Jacqueline Madden took me on a stroll around the park and shared why this place means so much to her. It's a very special moment. I, um, it's a way that as for a program planner that you can not having served in a military aspect, it's a way that you still can feel like you're rendering service but not letting the legacies go unnoticed. So I, I think that's patriotic in itself. And it's just always um, just very touching to see what it means to the people who have lost and uh, the degree of appreciation that they feel for something like this. Along with their Remembrance Tower, they also have an American Eagle to represent the strength of our military personnel, which is the newest addition to the park. It's just, it has a significant meaning to our military. I say that we can't really repay our military heroes, but we can in a spirit of excellence, just honor their memories and their legacies. Many of those legacies being shared with its visitors through special programs and initiatives, preserving the stories of those that fought for our country. For the love of country, they pay the ultimate sacrifice, and that's something that we should never forget. We should always keep that at the top of our minds and the minds of our communities. And we have people who lost their mothers, fathers, family, and friends. And we, it's a way for us to say, we support you, we love you, and we'll always honor the sacrifice that your loved one made. What a beautiful space. Keynote speakers at today's ceremony paid special tribute to the veterans and fallen heroes of World War II. To learn more about the park, we will have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv. It really is such a beautiful place. When we come back, don't sweat high energy costs this summer. The resource that can help you easily shop providers. Plus, Food Network star chef Eddie Jackson is showing us the simple way to make his latest recipe just in time for grilling season. Houston Life will be right back. With the summer heat rolling in, you'll be cranking up that AC in no time. And that could mean electric bills that could skyrocket. Lucky for us, our next guest promises to help us save money and not overpay for electricity. Here to explain is Director of Operations for Power Wizard, Jeff Cocking. Welcome to Houston Life, Jeff. We just had a great chat during commercial break. I could talk about this all day long. Explain to us, I've seen your commercials, explain to us how Power Wizard essentially sets out to save people money. How does it work? So if you think about uh, the Texas electricity market, it can be very confusing for a lot of people. And so what most people do is, you know, when they're confused or uncertain, they just, they avoid it. 
And that is the, one of the worst things you can do because if you think about your electric bill is just so high. And so what Power Wizard does is we actually go out and we, we do all the shopping for you. Uh, you know, our job is to keep you from ever paying for electricity. And so our experts go out, we do the shopping for you, we pick the best plan, we sign you up, we do all the work for you. And so we do the work, you just get to save money. Okay, so you just mentioned something that I think is key. Here in Texas, it's great because we do have choice. We can choose the company we go with. For a lot of people, I think that leads to confusion when it comes to kilowatt hours and how much they're using and cents per whatever kilowatt hour. So how does someone actually know or how can they find out if they are overpaying for the electricity they're using? Yeah, and uh, the, the, the comment we always tell people, it's not a matter of are you overpaying? The question is how much are you overpaying by? Uh, because the reps, uh, the retail electric providers out there, their job is to make money off of you. And so a few minutes ago, they were doing a, a camera roll of a video uh, of our savings calculator. And, and I affectionately love to call it our overpaying calculator. And so what we tell people is just go grab a bill uh, and grab a bill. It can be any time in the bill in the last three to four months and come to our website and come to our savings calculator because we're going to ask you five simple questions. It literally takes about 30 seconds. And we're going to ask you for your zip code. We're going to ask you uh, what month of your bill is for. What was your total cost? Because we focus on how much money is coming out of your checking account. That's what really matters is how much money is coming out of your checking account. What is your usage for the previous month? And do you have electric or gas heat? And so you walk through this, it's a very quick uh, tool. But after you enter those five data elements, our algorithms go to work. And what we're doing is we're actually figuring out what your electric usage is for the entire year by month. And then we figure out for every electric plan in the market that we have, we figure out what is the best price product for you based off how much money you're gonna spend on an annual basis. And what we're seeing is on, uh, on an average, our customers are saving somewhere between over 400 to over a thousand a year. And that's average. I had a customer the other day who was gonna save $1,700 a year and we cut their bill in half. And so that's what Power Wizard does. We do all the shopping and we figure out the best plan for you so you can just save money. So when people are saving money and you mentioned it could potentially be hundreds of dollars per year, that totally makes your monthly fee worth it how much is that uh membership to become a power wizard member so we just charge you eight dollars a month for that service and that's for us to do all your shopping we do all the uh, we keep track of your calendars when you're coming up if you have problems while you're with that electric provider we'll take care of those for you we do everything for you and what's really great is we're true savings you'll save more money than our fee in fact we guarantee it if we don't save you more money every month than what our fee is we'll refund you our fee every month okay i am literally signing up that's those are the words i needed to hear i love a guarantee okay so you say jeff that a good rule of thumb is that if you are with your electricity provider for more than two years, you're probably overpaying for electricity. Why is that? Well, you know, we all ignore that letter that comes in the mail that says your contract is up. And we just kind of push it to the side because it's life. You know, we're living life. But the problem is the minute you do that, you go on a variable rate. And that electric company can change your rate without notifying you. And so what we know is they continuously raise your rate, raise your rate, raise your rate. And this is where we're seeing customers are paying these exorbitant bills. You know, when you figure you can cut your bill in half, and then you think about, I've been with that company for 10 years. How much money have you overpaid? I was working with a lady the other day. She estimated she's been overpaying her electric company $10,000 <gasps> over the last 11 years. Oh. That's money you can spend for summer vacations. Yeah, that's money you could do a lot with. All right, Jeff Cocking, yes. here's the good news. I still have a million questions for you. Here's the bad news. We're out of time, but I hope we can continue the conversation at some point. Thanks so much yes. for the info, and thanks for helping us save some money. Thank you. Jeff Cocking, thanks so much for your time. For more information, you can visit powerwizard.com or call 855-475-8315. Now let's send things over to Courtney for a look at what's coming up on Houston Life. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Derek. Coming up, meet the local woman on a real sweet mission to support our troops. We're going to get a check of what's coming up in the news at 4 as well. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Good afternoon, I'm Christine Noel. And I'm Lauren Freeman. Here's a look at some of the stories we're covering this afternoon on KPRC 2 News at 4. The search continues for a missing boy who turned six years old this weekend. Samuel Olson was reported missing Thursday night. Texas EquiSearch volunteers have been searching a field behind an apartment complex in Webster. KPRC 2's Brandon Walker is out there right now. We'll have the very latest update ahead at 4. It is Memorial Day when we honor the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. There have been several events across the Houston 
Mason area today recognizing these brave men and women. We'll take a look at how our communities are remembering them coming up. And also coming up at 4 o'clock, a wrong lottery ticket turns out to be a big winner for one woman. She didn't realize that when she bought the ticket, it was after the cutoff for that evening's drawing. So it ended up being a ticket for the following drawing three days later. We're going to show you just how much money she ended up winning. Now that is luck. Yeah, that is luck. So far today, we have been dry for most people. Yeah, but looks like that luck might might be soon running out. We want to check in with Justin to see how things are shaping up. Oh, uh, not only that, it's going to run out for some folks as early as this evening. I'll show you in a sec here. Right now, though, not too bad. This is a live look from here at KPRC2. It's steamy outside, though. Temperatures are running in the upper 80s, both at the Big Airport down in Sugar Land. Galveston has been packed with folks all weekend. It's 83 down there right now with that east-southeast wind. We've got mid-80s. The humidity makes it feel closer to about 89 to 90, low 90. So nothing super oppressive, but still on the warm side. And we're starting to see a few light showers streaming in from the coast. Most of this isn't going to amount to much rain. But we've got some action to the west of Dallas. We're going to keep a watch on this line as it gets closer to us right now. Notice up towards the northern Brazos Valley, there's a severe thunderstorm watch until 7 o'clock. And the question is, is how close does that get to some of our northern counties? I think they could see some storms by about 9, 10 o'clock tonight. Otherwise, we'll keep it fairly quiet. We will keep it fairly warm, though, and stay into the 70s. And Welcome back. A Montgomery County woman found a touching way to thank our troops for protecting our country. She does it by sending a small piece of home through big gourmet chocolate chip cookies. Many of those cookies. Her name is Marlene Summers, founder of Grammy's Cookie Convoy, and she joins us now with details on this sweet gesture. Marlene, it's great to see you. So for our viewers who have never heard of Grammy's Cookie Convoy, describe to us how it all started and what exactly it does. Um, well, um, I'm actually a golfer and I was uh, practicing getting ready for a tournament and I met a young man that was working at our club and he uh, just struck me as a, uh, quite, a, quite a gentleman and, and a young man that was about the same age as my, my kids. And so when I left the putting green, I said, well, Michael, I will see you next week. And he said, uh, no, ma'am, I'll be deployed to Iraq next week. And this was back in early 2000s. And, um, it struck me, just kind of surprised me and took me back because the war in Iraq has just kind of started, you know, being in the forefront. And um, so I, I took it upon myself to meet his family and see if I could send him support. And I sent him support and then uh, got an email saying that their morale was getting low and the troops were beginning to feel forgotten. So I, I thought there must be something I could do more. And so... 300,000 cookies later, here we are. <laughs> it's really incredible. And when you found out that, that morale was low, you did something so simple, but yet something to bring back a, a, a sense and a taste of home. And, and that's where you decided to make those cookies. And it, it really is incredible, Marlene, the impact that you did. Refresh my memory, you did this all in your home in the beginning, right? Well, um, I actually still do it out of my home, but I don't bake the cookies. We send uh, five to 10,000 cookies at a time. And um, so I don't bake the cookies myself, but I have a bakery that has been phenomenal to work with. And they worked with our recipe and then we have them all individually wrapped um, so that when we ship them, they, you know, they remain safe on the journey. And so it actually, my grandmother used to send me cookies when I was away in college. And every time I'd go to the post office box and get that box of cookies, it was the best day ever. So I just thought it might bring a little bit of home you know, to them while they're ser serving overseas. Yeah, nothing like a care package from home. I mean, it seems like Grammy's Cookie Convoy has grown exponentially, sending these cookies and thank you cards to deployed service members of all five branches. Is it true that to date you have shipped more than 312 thousand cookies to our troops it's hard to believe <laughs> but it is true yes um, every super bowl sunday we get together and that's when we have our big mega shipments um i ship throughout the year but um those are our big mega shipments and we have um bentwater volunteer families which is a parent um, child volunteer organization national charity league which is a mother daughter um, organization and several of my friends and family and we all get together and we pack up the 10,000 cookies and the, the cards and the letters from the kids and all over the nation actually people have been phenomenal I think those mean you know so much to the troops to read that the people back home are still supporting them and sending you know their goodwill and support so uh 
I have to tell you, looking at all these photos of the troops and service members and holding up the, the cookies and their big smile, you can't help but notice the big smile and what that sweet impact is on them to receive these cookies. Let's talk about what's new because um, in February, you shipped more than 3,000 cookies to the USS Eisenhower? Yes, we did. Um, we had a request from, we have a website and our Instagram and Facebook and whatnot. We had a request to send some cookies to this uh, lady's husband uh, serving on the USS Eisenhower. And he, he, um, he was a good contact for us. And so I asked her if we could share support to all of them. And uh, she kind of was surprised. And I said, well, I know there's a, several thousand that serve on the carriers because we have shipped several carriers. And we hate to send one or two cookies for, per person. We try to cover all of the, the troops that are serving with them so nobody is left out. And so um, anyway, we did. And, and he was nice enough to take our cookies up into the cockpit. <laughs> That's the first time they've gone for a ride in, in the cockpit. So. Well, Marlene Summers, Grammys, Cookie, Convoy, thank you so much for your time today, and thanks for everything you're doing. Can I just ask one one thing? Um, if anyone is listening or, or um, if they would like to help us, the biggest way they could help us is to send us the cards or letters or drawings from the kids. Um, we, we accept them year round and they really make a big impact with our project. It's so. a great way to contribute to your cause as well. Marlene, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. And continued success. By the way, for ways to donate to Grammy's Cookie Convoy, like she mentioned with the cards and the, and the drawings, we do have a link seen on Houston Life section of our website. All the information is right there for you. Lovely gesture. 312,000 cookies Incredible. sent so far. Really great. Well, coming up, from fighting wrinkles to treating sunburn, skincare tips to keep in mind as the temperatures starts to heat up this summer. Plus, what's cooking with Chef Eddie Jackson from the Food Network. Lauren Kelly is joining him at the grill next. We are outdoors on this beautiful day. I am here with Chef Eddie Jackson, who I'm sure you guys recognize from pretty much every food cooking show that there is. Welcome to the Houston Life today. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Yes, I, I stay pretty busy. I was I joking around busy. with Eddie, and I said, you know what? The list of shows that you haven't been on is shorter than the list that you had been on. That is true, though. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So let's run through a couple for fans okay. who recognize you. Where have you been? Well, let's see. Uh, One Food Network star. Um, I have several shows on the network. Christmas Cookie Challenge. Yum and Yummer on Cooking Channel. Um, I just finished up a big show um, with Bobby Flay that's going to be coming out this summer that I'm excited about. But the more important thing is that uh, now I'm the chief recipe officer for Beef Love in Texas. Uh, I'm, a is... beef, I'm a Beef Love in Texan <laughs> right here. And that shirt is awesome. We love it. So I know we're going to go over some really great beef instructions for us today. This is a simple recipe that everybody yeah. can make at home, right? Absolutely. So um, all the recipes that I do for Beef Love in Texas are very approachable. Um, they're easy, they're fast, but lots of flavor. That's okay. my whole, that's my motto. So what this is, is uh, this is a shish kebab trio, which is mm. featured on their website right now. Okay. So basically what I have is shish kebabs from all over the world. Okay. So we have a bulgogi, which is kind of a Korean, kind of a, a twist to it, Asian bagogi. twist. Bulgogi. Bulgogi, okay. yeah. So then the two in the middle are going to be kind of your Tuscan, Italy. So okay. lots of aromatic herbs that's in there. And lastly, what I have is what I'm going to show you today is a bear bear, which is a North African kind of spice Ooh. blend, specifically Ethiopia. What kind of meat are you using now? So this is sirloin. Okay. I love using sirloin for shish kebabs because it has a good combination of fat and lean. A lot of times when you do something like this too fatty, like a ribeye, okay. it burns, it chars too quickly gotcha. and doesn't cook on the inside. Okay. So what are we starting with? So basically what I've done is toasted up some spices. So I have some paprika. And again, this recipe is on beefloveintexans.com. Okay. So I have some cardamom, some fenugreek, some smoked paprika, cinnamon and nutmeg, some chili dare mm. ball, some garlic that are already kind of draped okay. inside of the meat right here, inside this bowl on the meat. So I'm going to add some of these spices. Is there a too much to add, or can they really just kind of marinate in as much spice as you prefer? Well, for me, what I like to do is a tablespoon of dry rub to a pound of whatever meat you're using. Okay. That's the rule of thumb. Dry rub. You're speaking my language now. Now I'm speaking I your know, language, right? I know what that is. 
is, yes. All right, so then we're just mixing it up, and you cut about how many pieces per so kebab? So I try to do about four to five a kebab. Okay. And I like to, the thing about kebabs is that you want to make sure that you have all the pieces the same exact size. Okay. That way they cook exactly the same. Right, you don't have to leave it longer for one piece or shorter exactly. versus another. Gotcha. So you can see all these kebabs, all the cuts of meat are exactly the same. The okay. good thing is that at most grocery stores, they are cut it, they have a pack that's already pretty much cut out for awesome. shish kebabs. Okay, so you're just stacking them there, you're putting the peppers in between, and now my question is, what do you grill it at with temperature wise and how long? So for me, I try to go for like medium uh, with shish kebabs, so I'll take it off for about 121, 122, and just okay. let it rest for a little bit is okay. what I like to do. I feel like that's where my and my boyfriend's problems come in because we like it rare, but for some reason, we just can't ever get that temperature right, and then it's still mooing, and that's not what I want. Exactly. So this is okay. what you come out with. See how okay, great. deep red that is? That looks beautiful. We keep it on the grill. I know you got some finished products So I have some that's try. actually done. Okay. So let's see here. I know you can't smell it through the camera, you guys, but it smells amazing. Okay, so Ooh. get a, a little taste of that. Okay. So we have a knife here. Okay. So you this is going to be this Tuscan herb. All right, Tuscan herb. Let's so you see it's perfect it's nice in the middle. Oh, pink on the inside. That's exactly how That's I like exactly it. That's exactly what you okay. want. Uh. So give that a taste. Mmm. I have been waiting to eat that. Mm. This is my happy dance. Mm. 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 <laughs> I got to chew it up. It's so good. Mm. I'm getting all that flavor. Chef Eddie Jackson, thank you so much for your time today. I love it. If you guys want this full recipe for the Shish Kebab Trio, I'll put it on our website, HoustonLife.tv. And she always gets those yummy assignments. Looks great. Thanks, Lauren. Well, tis the season for beach days and outdoor barbecues, right? If you want to help your skin stay healthy, our next guest has easy tips to keep you in mind. Keep in mind this summer, board certified dermatologist, Dr. Sherry Ingraham, our friend of the show. It's great to see you. Good to see you guys. Okay, let's first talk about this sunscreen. We have to, how do we figure out which one is right? Because I feel like you go to the store, there's SPF 1000, there's SPF 500. I don't know which one is, is right for what activity. The most important thing is that it is broad range, UVA, UVB, and SPF 30 or higher. After that, you want to pick something you'll use. So if you're a young person and you don't want a thick sunscreen that smells, you may look for more of a gel or more of a lighter sunscreen. If you're using it on a kid, for example, a stick is great because they can apply it themselves. Neutrogena makes great deodorant looking sticks or even sprays you can apply to wet skin. If you're a woman and you have hyperpigmentation, there's some great new products out. So there's a new product out from SkinCeuticals, which is daily brightening sunscreen. This just came out last week. This actually has transdynamic acid in it. And what that does is it brightens the skin. It'll actually inhibit pigmentation if you have melasma and brown spots. It also has some agents in it like mica that you can use daily on any skin tone regardless of your skin tone. It will work on all skin tones. It won't make them look ashy and it'll give the skin a glow which is really exciting. And then of course I always tell people the best skin care, the best sunscreen is the one you'll use. So for men, I find a lot of times they'll use a sunscreen that doesn't have much of a scent. So I have them usually use something like UV Daily from Elta. It's a great SPF that has zinc in it, but it also doesn't have much of a scent. And of course, if you're someone who's sensitive to sunscreens or you feel like you're allergic, you need a physical sunscreen. So you want to look for something that says sensitive skin or physical. Aveeno, Neutrogena, and Elta all make pure zinc and titanium sunscreen screens for sensitive skin. Okay, all great options as well. Let's talk about some serums because I know we're always talking about fighting wrinkles and you say vitamin C is the best thing to use and we can do that right now through summer. You can do that every day. I, I always tell people, I don't even think I missed a day, you know, <laughs> before COVID, after COVID, this is my holy grail. And the reason is it is so active in the skin and it's absorbed in the skin, but the key is it has to be at the right pH and the right concentration. So you want vitamin C in a serum form and you want it to be at about 15%, anywhere from about 10 to 25% is the most active, best absorbed by your skin. You want to put this on in the morning 
leave it on a minute and put your sunscreen on top. Actually, I've got men who do this because it's so well absorbed, but that creates an environmental shield. So it blocks a lot of this air pollution we have. We now know ozone contributes to brown spots and skin damage, but it also combines with your sunscreen to give you the best environmental shield possible. And then it helps to lighten brown spots and stimulate new collagen. So it's really for everybody. I chase my children around literally in the morning and put this on them as well. I love it. It sounds like a winter product. Okay, Dr. Ingerham, I know we have to say this, avoid the sunburn, but if it happens, what do we do? I mean, I hate to tell you, it even happens to me. Dermatologists and my children, you should have seen me at spring break chasing them around trying to heal their sunburns because even on the best of intentions and the best skincare and sunscreen, if you can get a sun shirt on, remember that sun protective clothing will do better than sunscreen, right? Because you don't have to reapply it, especially if you're in the water. But if you do get burned, a couple of things. The first thing you want to do is take some ibuprofen. You can give your children ibuprofen liquid, or you as an adult can take two ibuprofen. This blocks the release of prostaglandin, which is what makes us feel red and burned. That's day one, okay? You can repeat that on day two. Also getting a compress, a little washcloth with some cold milk on it or cold water, laying it on the area can soothe. And one of my favorite things to do, you can buy this at the drugstore. This is La Roche-Posay mineral water. It's about $13. You can spray this two or three times a day, let it sit for two or three minutes on the skin. It has antioxidants and minerals that soothe the skin. So for a really significant burn, it'll take that temperature down. Also, if your rosacea is flaring, it'll take the temperature down. And then if you're still uncomfortable, Grab some over-the-counter cord aid and put it on those spots that feel burned. Of course, if you're significantly burned or blistered, don't peel or pick on those blisters and go see a dermatologist. Absolutely. And I know for TLC for the skin, you say hydration, omega-3s, eat your veggies and fruits, blackberries, raspberries. Those are great boosting. And also make sure you put on enough sunscreen. We hear you every single time. Dr. Sherry Ingraham, always great to connect with you. And thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you so much for having me. We'll see you soon. To connect with Dr. Ingerham and for more information, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. And we'll be right back with more Houston Life. Such a fun show on this Memorial Day. It has been a nice show and a nice Memorial Day as well. We hope wherever you are, wherever you're tuning in, that you are taking time to really think about why we have this day and really think about the sacrifices that so many servicemen and women have made for our country. Absolutely. And uh, more information, of course, about Grammy's Cookie Convoy. And simple thing, even if you don't have the, the money to support them, uh, cards and notes and pictures to this service to our troops, really incredible. Yeah, and they say that they especially love cards and handwritten notes uh, from little children because it's just such a sweet act of love. So there are all kinds of ways that you can give back and help and let our troops know we're thinking about them. All that information, of course, is on our website. Remember, Dr. Sherry Ingerham talks about all of our summer sun care tips, right? The amount of sunscreen that we need to use, right? We sometimes just think like a little dab. A full, dab's not going to do you. Full shot glass every single day. Absolutely. Keep applying. Well, good to see you, Derek. Good to see you, and good to see all of you. Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. That's right. We'll see you again tomorrow.